Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I was going to keep it short tonight and just share with you a hadith that talks about a very simple and easy means or an easy practice that will actually guarantee us Jannah. But before I share that hadith, do you mind if I share just a small reflection based on the last verse that we just covered? Is that okay? Okay. And this is really not, that's why I didn't go up there. This is not meant for like international audience. This is meant for my beloved, dear community members, each and every single one of you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, talks about Jannah in the last verse. And then it says, وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ مَنْ تَزَكَّهُ Jannah is the reward of whoever does tazkiyah, purifies himself. Now, imagine a vehicle, imagine your car being parked just out there, nothing happening. You're not driving it, you're not using it, it's just sitting there. By the fact that it's just sitting out there, what happens after a while? That car would need what? Wash. Needs to be washed, right? And no one can come and say, why, why are you washing it? Why do you need to purify it and wash it? It just has been sitting there. It didn't do anything. No one used it. Same thing with our homes. It's the default. It's the default effect of being in dunya, in this life. Even if you don't do anything, if you don't engage, if you don't do anything, if you're just sitting, doing nothing, you're going to get polluted. You're going to have dirt. Dunya by nature, that's what it is. It brings about filth. So you have to constantly engage in purification and a cleansing process. When it comes to taking care of our belongings or items or gadgets or cars or homes, we're always, hopefully we are, we, we're, we're, constantly very conscious of the fact that we need to keep it clean. We need to keep our clothes clean. We always do this. We take this to the dry cleaners, we do, we do this. We all, we're, we're constantly doing this. It's, a, it's an everyday process, every day. We wake up, we wash our hands, we maintain our hygiene every day. There's one thing that is very often neglected by most people, which is the inner purity of the soul, of the heart, which is more, and more important and more critical. What good is it that a person outwardly looks great and they're well-groomed and they're beautiful and they're handsome and they're, you know, you see them, they're very attractive, but their heart is full of filth. Their heart is plagued with, you know, diseases, spiritual diseases. If you really get to know them, you wouldn't even, you wouldn't be in their company. Not for a second. Allah Azza wa Jal says, or the Prophet Sallallahu rather says, Allah the Almighty does not look at, as important as, as it is to keep, to keep clean and neat and nice and beautiful and everything. That's, as a matter of fact, in the Quran it says, the verse that we recited not too long ago, خُذُوا زِينَتَكُمْ عِنْدَ كُلِّ مَسْجِدٍ Make sure that you, you dress up and that you look good when you come to the masjid. But the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah does not judge you based on your physiques or your outlooks or your images, your looks, right? Your beauty, your height. All these things are superficial in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your status, your degree, these things matter to us, we humans, when we interact with one another. But to Allah, Allah looks at the real you. The one that no one in the world knows except Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet ﷺ says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى لَا يَنظُرُ إِلَىٰ صُوَرِكُمْ وَلَا إِلَىٰ إِسْلَامِكُمْ Allah Azza wa Jal does not examine or look at your images or your looks or your bodies or your physiques. وَلَكِنْ يَنظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ But what Allah Azza wa Jal looks at and examines is the state of your hearts and the quality of your deeds. What is in your heart? What are you made of? 
And someone might say, of course, I mean, we're, we're deficient. We're not perfect. Yeah, but there is a beautiful process, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are processes Allah azza wa jal put in place for us within our reach. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us how to purify ourselves and how to cleanse our hearts. Part of which is this fasting that we're doing. It's meant to do that. The salah, the five daily prayers that we pray, it's meant to cleanse us from inside. By the way, the better the quality of your salah is, the better the result of your cleansing or purification process will be. The wudu that we make, it's not just physical, but it's spiritual as well. Telling the truth, right? Watching what we say. The dhikr that we make, istighfar, which brings me to what I wanted to share with you tonight. The Prophet ﷺ in a hadith mentioned the following. For those who are interested to make it to Jannah, remember Allah said, وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ مَنْ تَزَكَّى It is the reward for those who actually purify themselves. Abdullah ibn Amr, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him. He narrated this hadith. استمعوا يا عباد الله يقول سيدنا عبد الله ibn Amr ibn al-As رضي الله عنهما عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم خصلتان أو خلتان This is Jannah made easy Access to Jannah made easy خصلتان أو خلتان لا يحافظ عليهما عبد مسلم إلا دخل الجنة There are two qualities or two practices and two habits No believing, no Muslim servant of Allah عز وجل maintains them keeps them consistently except will enter Jannah That person will enter Jannah the Prophet ﷺ, then he commented, he said, Huma yaseer, yamalu bihima qaleel. They are very easy, yet those who actually practice it are very few. Okay, what is it? The Prophet ﷺ said, Yusabbihu fi duburi kulli salatin ashra. At the end of every salah, and it appears that the Prophet ﷺ is talking about the five daily prayers which means that you have to maintain the five daily prayers, right? Praying them in jama'ah, praying them on time is best. Okay. So at the end of every prayer, if you can't say 33 times, then at least 10 times. Subhanallah, 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 subhanallah. I'm assuming it takes, what, 10 seconds? Less than 10 seconds. وَيَحْمَدُ عَشْرَى Says, Alhamdulillah. And you say Alhamdulillah ten times. وَيُكَبِّرُ عَشْرًا And you say ten times as well, Allahu Akbar. What is that, 30 seconds? I don't think it's 30 seconds, it's less than that. فَذَلِكَ خَمْسُونَ وَمِئَةَ بِالْلِسَانِ وَأَلْفٌ وَخَمْسُمِئَةَ فِي الْمِيزَانِ The Prophet Sallallahu said, that will count as 150, right? 30, 30 after each salah, that's 150 at the end of the day. So that's 150 with your tongue, yet in the scale of Allah Azza wa it weighs what? Alf, 1,500, 1,500. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِذَا And you say Allahu Akbar 34 times when you actually go to sleep, you go to bed. And you say SubhanAllah, 33 times. And you say, Subhanallah, 30, 33 times. That's total of what? 100 with your tongue. Right? And on the scale of Allah, in the scale of Allah, it weighs 1,000. فَلَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَعْقِدُهَا بِيَدِهِ The Prophet ﷺ was showing them. فَقَالُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ كَيْفِ how? How, Messenger of Allah? What did you mean by the fact that it's very simple, easy, but most people don't do it? He said, this is how shaitan plays this trick on you. قَالَ يَأْتِي أَحَدَكُمْ يَأْتِي الشَّيْطَانُ أَحَدَكُمْ يَأْتِي أَحَدَكُمْ يَعْنِي الشَّيْطَانُ فِي مَنَامِهِ فَيُنَوِّمُهُ When you're about to go to sleep, shaitan will come to you, right? Distracts you with different thoughts and things that you have to remember and your to-do list for the next day or the things, the ridiculous things that, that happened during your day that you're really still not completely over. Whatever it is, the shaitan distracts you. And sometimes maybe family members, right? 
Like you're about to fall asleep and then they start, oh wait, wait, before you go to sleep, just in case you don't wake up, I need to tell you all these things that happened when you were not here. <laughs> yeah. Going to sleep, our Shaykh Habibullah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's Allah Yu Afiyahu wa Yashfiyahu, wa Yahfadahu. Or Shaykh uh Shaykh Ja'far Shaykh Idris used to say, going into sleep is actually a very serious ordeal. It's a serious process. You're actually transitioning into a spiritual realm that, you know. And he used to say, we have to prepare ourselves. And the sunnah is that we make wudu, we pray two rak'ah, right? We cleanse our hearts, we forgive people, right? Just in case. It's a transition into, into you know, where the spirit is, is freed. He said, most people, there are some, some of us guilty, uh, you know, myself, guilty of it. We, we fall asleep, you know, watching things. And he, he's like, it's not, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to do dhikr. But anyways, so the Prophet says, shaitan will come to you, distract you with things, and then you fall asleep without doing it. Though it, all it takes is 100 seconds. Allahu Akbar, 34 times. La qabl. Alhamdulillah, 33 times. You reverse the, the order. And then you say, Subhanallah, 33 times. That's it. That's all. And it's what the Prophet ﷺ, when Fatima radiallahu anhu, his, her, his own daughter, Fatima radiallahu anha, when she came and she asked the Prophet ﷺ for help, she said, I'm overwhelmed with my, you know, with my uh, duties at home, housekeeping. I'm overwhelmed. I need, you know, she told Ali radiallahu anha, her husband and the Prophet's cousin Ali, she said, Go to the Prophet, see if he can spare us, if he can lend us a servant, can find us someone, a maid or someone that can help me at home. She had four kids, little ones, back to back. The daughter of the Prophet, the best of human beings. Her hands were cracking, her hands were getting dry from washing and from doing things and from taking care of her. So the Prophet. When Ali radiallahu anhu came to him, he said, okay, go to Fatima, I will come. He went and he said, Fatima, I will teach you something that is better for you, both of you. Min khadim, khayrul lakuma min khadim. And what he taught them was, when you go to bed, both of you together, when you go to bed, do the following. Right? Takbir. 34 times. Alhamdulillah, 33 times. Subhanallah. 33 times. That is better for you and more empowering and more energizing for you than having a maid or a servant at home. This is the Prophet, you know, to his own daughter. So the Prophet said, very few people really maintain it. And then the Prophet mentioned that the person also, as soon as you finish the salah, he said, and shaitan will come to you in your prayer. And, and warning, by the way, they're going to come at us very hard after Ramadan. They're already working. The Prophet said that shaitan will come to you while you're in your salah and then will remind you of something that you totally forgot about. Oh, you got to take care of this. You got to take care of that. Right? Yeah, I'm sure if I ask and I say, show of hand, who can relate to this? We're all going to raise our hands. Whoever doesn't raise his hand, we're, I'm going to go and just look for barakah in them and just really, like, I'll go home with them. I'll be their maid. We're all guilty of this. Sah? So the Prophet said, don't, don't fall for it. Shaitan will come and will remind you that you really have to make a phone call, that you have to respond to something, that you have to get out of the masjid. That you're in a hurry to do something before you say it. All it takes is 30 seconds. Right? Tasbih, 10 times. Tahmeed, saying Alhamdulillah 10 times. And saying Allahu Akbar 10 times. And then if you can, if you can do Ayatul Kursi, if you can read Ayatul Kursi after every salah, the Prophet said, there will be nothing between you. And Jannah, there will be nothing between you and entering Jannah except death. Death is the only thing keeping you away from Jannah. And remember, the Prophet ﷺ said, Jannah is actually closer to you than your shoelaces. <coughs> it's closer to you. It's that, that close. Right? 
any second you can find yourself in Jannah if you actually hold on to these prophetic advices and teachings. May Allah Azza wa Jal make you and I of the people of Jannah. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-Jannah wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin aw amal wa na'udhu bika min al-nar wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin aw amal Allahumma inna ka'afun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anna Allahumma inna ka'afun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anna Allahumma inna ka'afun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anna